Thank you, everyone. Um, all right. Um, hey, uh, so I'm Yash. I'm a team lead here at uh, Alassian. I've been building data platforms uh, for a long time. Um, most of the time, I've been building analytical data platforms. Um, today, I'm going to talk on something different. Uh, this is a new platform that Atlassian is building um, for the last uh, one year, and uh, this is about the transactional data uh, and how we are embedding compliance in the data uh, platform. So I need to start with that because uh, a lot of the audience here is analytical, so this is not an analytics platform talk. Uh, I know analytics platform are awesome. This is about transactional data. So it's not about getting insights from your data. It is about data that you're using in the products, like zero confluence. When you're looking at attachments or the labels, the platform is powering that kind of transactional data. It's not ETL processing talk. It's not a data engineering pipeline talk. Um, I'm not going to get into too much implementation detail, but I'll be taking questions if I have time. I've got some architecture for you to share. Um, and this is not a vendor pitch, but you will find a flavor of Amazon maybe because uh, we are married to Amazon in, in, in a way. Uh, Alasan has built everything on top of Amazon, so you'll get that flavor here. Okay, so um, yeah, this is what I'll try to cover in this talk. What, what are we trying to solve? That is what I'd like a takeaway for everyone. Uh, a bit of architecture. This is a transactional platform, but it's platform engineering, and you'd be able to reuse a lot of that in the platform that you are building for your machine learning platform or analytical platform. Um, some challenges and future for the platform. What are we looking at, uh, looking at at the next few quarters, and some time for questions. All right, what and why of transactional data platform? Before I get to that, let's, uh, let's get into a bit of knowing Atlassian a little better. Um, so hey, we're Atlassian, we make those products uh, uh, that are like Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket. Uh, we have got about 260,000 customers uh, uh, and growing, and we are in a lot of com countries. We're in 190 countries at the moment. Now this is where it gets interesting, okay? We've got 800 tier one and above production services. These are the services that are powering your product experiences. These are the services that you, you're sort of interacting day to day when you're using our products. Out of that, there are 100 services that are touching UGC. This is the data you have provided. Uh, any sort of identifiable information, any sort of user-generated content, any images that you're uploading, all of that is your data. So. That's a, lot of, uh, that's a lot of trust you're putting on companies like Alasan and others, right? And that's why we take that compliance really, really seriously. Um, and that is, that is a big tone of the transactional data platform. How are, we, how are we embedding compliance in the data storage layer so that you, you have got that trust in the data? So just to, I don't know the font, how, how, how visible that is. Uh, but just to look at the cloud roadmap, you'll see a lot of promises Alassan is giving to you. So there's data residency being present in multiple regions, but also things like, uh, hey, uh, you, you're a company in Japan and you want all of your data in Japan, right? So uh, this could be your uh, training data, this could be your machine learning artifacts that have been trained, uh, but you, you would want them to be locally stored. Uh, things like BYOK, where your data is encrypted your data is critical, you've encrypted it by your key, and whenever you just want to revoke, you go to your account, revoke the key, and all of the models are unusable. Uh, you, you, you get BYOK out of the box. Uh, things like FedRAMP, so if you're a US Fed uh, style employee, uh, you would want all of your data in a very isolated region, and uh, none other region would have access to that. So, so the, the, these are the things that Alassan is promising you to just maintain the data safety. Right? This is a lot of work though, looking at 100 plus services that is touching your data and so many promises that we're making. Uh, it's a lot of engineering work. So the time to market is really slow if, if there's just so many services in different languages, different stack touching your data. And Alassian will not let a new microservice go to production until they have met these compliance standards. So the time to market is really high when Alassan is keeping that bar there. Okay, 
coming to the tone of the presentation. So what is transactional data platform? On a very high level, we do two things. We do managed data storage, and we do compliance in the platform level. So managed data stores. So we're built on top of AWS, so a lot of them are managed services. We offer another layer of abstraction on top of that. So if you're using DynamoDB, you would not get direct access to DynamoDB anymore. You would have a TDP storage layer, and you would be talking via the TDP API to the underlying data stores. That's managed data stores. And uh, we do compliance, which means that you don't have to care about all of those commitments. As long as your data is on TDP on the platform, we are taking care of it. We are intercept. So as a Jira admin, you might just go to the Jira admin portal and say that, okay, my site is in US region, but now I've got a Germany region. Please move all of my data to Germany. As those 100 service owners, you don't mind, you don't care. TDP will intercept these sort of calls. TDP will spin up background jobs, and TDP will move all of your data to the new regions. So your time to market is fast because the platform is taking care of that compliance for you. Our consumers are internal platform services or other teams that would be uh, storing data on us. The motivation is usually the later compliance because Alasans are usually pretty good at managing their own shit. So uh, managed data stores is, is a thing that we offer, but usually that's not the, the main factor that team would adopt us. Team would adopt us for compliance. All right, so um, yeah, that, that was like a summary. Okay, what are we doing? We're doing compliance at the platform level. Every time a new compliance comes in, it's we intercepting with those teams. We prioritize as part of our commitments so that teams individually don't have to keep track of the new compliance coming in. So we do it in a centralized place. What we massively boost is the developer productivity. Just based on our own work, a team of three developers takes two to three quarters to implement data residency. Multiplied by 100 services, multiplied by new regions, multiplied by new compliance requirements. That's where we save the time for the company. Um, and, and cost optimization. So we are continuously investing in our own platform cost. So we, we become multi-tenanted because all of the products start using us. Um, we, we, we will host data for all of the 200,000 customers. We are multi-tenanted. So some of the obvious patterns that a service would apply would not apply to us because just because of the multi-tenanted uh, nature. So we would be investing in platform optimizations. All other teams get it for free. All right, coming to the TDP architecture a bit. Um, at the moment, TDP is offering two backend storages. Uh, we offer an object store and we ob offer an entity store. Object storage is an abstraction built on top of Amazon S3. So any sort of attachment data, any sort of uh, emojis, any sort of uh, uh, videos, media goes to object storage. And uh, we've got entity storage, which is built on top of Amazon DynamoDB. Uh, you can define your schema. You can define your entities. You can have schema versions. Uh, it's more, it's more um, things like you could think uh, labels on the ticket or uh, contributors on a ticket, that sort of data. So more entity-like data. We've got a control plane, which is the place where you would register your schemas. You'll create your buckets. It's also a place where we would intercept product lifecycle events. So. Uh, there would be a lot of products as, as a Jira admin whenever you're invoking a new product workflow saying that, hey, I want to enroll for BYOK encryption. The control plane would be intercepting those calls. And when you start reading the data, they go straight to the data plane. So control plane will not be involved to just have the data transfer uh, directly. Uh, we've got an integration team that help us integrate with other service and platform. Uh, because there's an onboarding cost on TDP. A lot of the teams have actually built the controls. So we have to invest in actually integrating with other platforms that Alasan has, uh, onboarding. Your, you might have a DynamoDB in, in, your, uh, in your service. Getting that over to TDP, we've got a team that is sort of working on those integrations. A good platform only works with other platforms. Uh, so you could bake a lot into the platform, but then you'd make it really monolithic, right? So a good platform is that can send complications to other platforms and not do everything itself. Um, so product lifecycle 
orchestration or management is one of the big thing in TDP. If a service on boards on TDP and it doesn't have to care about compliance, it happens automatically, that is a great platform. But if TDP is also doing that, it sort of deviates from its mission, right? So Alasan, thankfully, has got a lot of existing platforms that help us here. We've got a platform that already intercepts all of the product lifecycle events, and it's easy to create more platforms as long as you've got the contract with this platform that is uh, managing the product lifecycle. So you could have more platforms like TDP created at Atlassian as long as you've got that contract adhered. Any customer, any tenants go to their site and create a new workflow. This common cloud provisioning platform will intercept that and it will ping, 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 ping all of the platforms say, okay, execute something. Right? And then there's a callback, and then there's retries, right? But then but what it means that the individual service now doesn't have to care about their tracking product lifecycle or they telling, hey, TDP, can you move your data? It is all managed on the platform infra level. One of the other platforms that, that is really useful is platform managed routing. So TDP is in multiple regions. Uh, a tenant is in Germany or India. They want to invoke TDP. They have to know, okay, which region should I be calling to? These are, these are all routing rules that would make your platform more complex. That how does the call even reach your platform, right? So Alasin solves it at a platform level again. There would be a service proxy layer where they're intercepting all the call. They have got tenant metadata. They can look up, okay, this tenant belongs to this region. Okay, TDP, have you got an instance running in this region? And it will automatically route it to that region. Again, not a TDP concern gets handled at a higher level uh, with a different platform. So yeah, just, just sharing the platform ecosystem that can help each other out and get velocity uh, out of that. One thing that I've not got in this slide, and that's a really cool thing that we're working on right now, is called service sharing. It's a pretty, pretty exciting thing. So rather than having a service in a particular region, you could basically have multiple shards in a region. So if, 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 if a stack is going down, you still have a better blast radius uh, and better containment. Um, you, you could handle US, where we've got most of our traffic, we'll have 10 shards running there. APAC or India, which are new regions, will have two shards running there. But it will be platform provisioned, which means that it is not as much effort to just bring up an entire service stack so when I say stack, I'm, I mean the storage, the, the load balancing, the API, all of the stack as a unit will just be cloned via the service sharding. It's, it's a thing we are working on right now in TDP. Uh, it's not on the slide because it's not introduction. <laughs> um, just a quick on what, what the API looks like. So we, the first is authentication. This is service to service, so external products or external customers do not talk to TDP directly. It is a platform, so only other platforms or internal services would be talking. So TDP will be using um, ASAP, which is a license authentication for service to service authentication. Uh, we've got rate limiting. That's uh, that's another. We've we've got a we've got a platform component for rate limiting management as well. So. Every platform or every service can have a configuration of rate limiting. You just update a configuration and that gets supplied to all of the services. So, uh, that, so every service will manage its own rate limit config. So by that we can do things like tenant level rate limiting. So like if there's one particular tenant that is really scraping or that's really uh, hitting hard on, uh, on the product, the blast radius is sort of uh, managed on a tenant level rate limiting. Uh, We've got a web server, we've got a tenant context lookup, which is basically a metadata store for all of the tenants. Where, where does a tenant exist? Uh, what are the enrollments they've got? Or is the tenant BYOK encrypted? So you've got a common layer that you can look up for actions that you want to do. So whenever you're getting a call from a tenant, it will, it will have sort of this context associated with it. And then we've got migration flows. So Anytime uh, we, we receive this event saying that, hey, this tenant wants to migrate to a new region, okay, we will spin up background jobs and we'll execute that transformation and uh, we'll move the data over. Or uh, let, let's say, uh, hey, a customer is leaving us and uh, we, we need to be compliant. We need to delete your data when you're, letting, when you're leaving us, right? So there'll be deletion workflows that will spin up in, in the background. Um, same with the encryption. Uh, Tech-wise, tech it's pretty AWS. Uh, um, the, 
The migration flows, we've used Amazon step functions with lambdas and Amazon batch copies. Uh, uh, BYOK, uh, yeah, server-side encryption, uh, using application-level encryption for BYOK. Uh, mostly AWS flavor uh, storage. Binary storage is S3 and uh, DynamoDB for the schema and entity store. Um, just got some numbers for this talk. What are we looking at? So object store is new and being developed, so you'll see the numbers are much lower. Entity store has been live for like uh, an year now. So we've got, uh, in terms of how many objects or entities we've got, we've got 2.4 billion in entity. We've got less than 20 million in object store. Uh, the current volume being three to four terabytes in both of the stores uh, at the moment. Projected for entity store is 20 petabyte over the next year and 40, uh, uh, 20 terabytes for the entity store over next year and 40 petabytes for the object store. So uh, 40 petabytes would be basically every single media that every single tenant has uploaded. Um, we will, we'll, yeah, and uh, uh, traffic uh, right now entity store is at like 200 RPM typical. Uh, object store has got 100 RPM, but the traffic is very heterogeneous. So you'd be uploading, so we're trying to go as close as S3, which means files up to five terabytes. And when you start uploading really large files, your SLO degradation starts happening. So we've got bucketed SLOs. So for smaller objects, uh, you, you, you can go quite high. Um, as, as you go to like larger gigabytes or terabytes, so we have a separate bucket of SLOs uh, for those. So 100 RPM is what we are supporting, but then it has got heterogeneous uh, traffic there. Um, what is next for TDP? Um, yeah, matching AWS limit. So we, we do not, TDP does not advertise itself as a S3 store or a DynamoDB store. So it is an abstraction. We, we sort of advertise ourselves as storage, right? So a lot of the time customers are not looking to have a feature parity with DynamoDB, but sometimes they do. Right? And every time Amazon is releasing something that can actually benefit TDP, we sort of have to catch up on that. Right? Usually, a lot of customers don't mind, but then we've got some customers that really want, that really benefit from that feature, right? And then platform needs to do that catch up on that. That's one of the challenges of TDP. New compliance requirement coming in, there's, there's new, so right now, BYOK, Dr. West, Intensi, FedRAMP, HIPAA. There's just new requirements coming on, and we just have to keep tap on that. That is, that is our uniqueness. That is where we're helping the business, and we have to be on top of all of the new uh, compliance that are coming. So that, that keeps us very busy. A lot of the time, this would be competing. So we, we want to work on both, let's say, encryption as well as Dr. West, Intensi migration, and just balancing between what, what is more valuable for the customer is one of the platform challenges. Onboarding challenges, so you've got your own data stores, you've, you've already built a lot of uh, optimizations for your own team. Um, what's the incentive to come to TDP? How can we make it an easy transition? So just investing into the importer tooling or just uh, uh, remodeling your data on, on, like with TDP's format, that's one of the challenges. Um, and more TDP backend. So uh, we get a lot of questions, so when are you getting an RES backend? Um, at the moment, TDP is focusing on just maturing the current backends and supporting teams with those. But over next year, we would start exploring uh, more, more backends that the teams uh, at Lassen uh, want. That is all. Um, that's all just sharing what uh, we've been building at TDP for compliance. Um, thanks. <laughs>